guitar, a spiritual six-string sonic powerhouse, and guitar stars back to make those dreams a reality. And myself, rock producer Tony Visconti, just one great guitarist emerges. This is Guitar Star. Our semi-finalists are experience firsthand the magical surroundings that have created some of the most revered music of all time. To record one of their tracks with yours truly at the controls. Abbey Road is probably the most historical studio in the whole entire world. I don't think anyone hasn't heard of it. The Beatles made it very popular. I mean, some of the best guitar sounds have been recorded here. The most famous studio, Studio Two. This is where George Martin and the Beatles made the bulk of their recordings. George Martin, who is my idol. This is I've been a record producer since the late 1960s, and across my career, I've worked with an array of notable musicians. My favorite artist that I've worked with in my career has been David Bowie. David Bowie was constantly changing his style from album to album. He always wanted to mix it up and change the game, like, what's he going to sound like now? In my career, I've worked with some amazing guitarists. Back in the 70s, I worked with Thin Lizzy, who had Gary Moore. He's a good man, a very open heart. Man. Any artist behaves a little differently from when they're on stage and when they're in the studio. I played bass on several David Bowie albums. I played bass on a few T-Rex tracks. But a lot of times I would spontaneously pick up the guitar and, and play a part, the guitar part, to embellish what they play. That's where the magic begins in the studio, but I'm going to give them the opportunity to have six hands. Abbey Road. This is probably the most famous recording studio in the world, and George Martin would be up there in the control room looking down in this studio, and you'd have the four Beatles with all, all their equipment all over the place. That piano behind me is the one where uh, Paul McCartney played Martha, My Dear, on. It's just an old, you know, mm. parlor piano. It's nothing special. But like I say, when the musicians come into a studio, that's what makes the studio famous, the mm. people who worked here. And I'm and so happy that it's still with us, and you use it and make great, fine music in this place, in these hallowed halls, as they say. <laughs> if I draw out the best performance from you, I feel like I've done my job. You've had a long relationship and musical journey with the great uh, David Bowie. May he rest in peace. And I just, I just want to know how you maintained an incredible energy between the two of you, but somehow managed to keep coming out with hits over the years. What's your secret? The secret is I think we had uh, good chemistry as friends. I met David Bowie in 1967, and we've been friends ever since. And we've had a great time together. We've argued, you know, it's a true friendship. And somehow that always managed to get into the recordings. The other thing is, David Bowie was always a rule breaker. And he always gave me the freedom as a producer to experiment. He never censored me, mm -hmm. and I never censored him, you know. Sure. So I don't know, I think it, it's based on a real deep friendship. I have to love the music. You can't make a great production without a great song. Number two, I have to love the artist, I like their energy. We have to make it as friends. To begin our uh, day's recording, I'm going to produce your uh, recording. I'll give you feedback. You are it. Zane is a remarkable guitarist. His roots are in jazz, but what he's doing now is well beyond that. He's kind of got this futuristic sound. He's got a lot of effects pedals, and he uses the, the loop pedal, which I'm ambivalent about. I mean, he's got effects, I've got effects in the studio. I'm better in your company, Tony. Okay, just give us a little run through. Okay. And then we'll proceed. Okay, we're rolling. We just started it. <laughs> Oh, 
God, it's beautiful. I mean, that could be it, Ooh. but could you just do me another loop section? Uh, Tony, look, just gonna play you one second of the loop and then the sound and just tell me if that's not too loud in case so I don't do the whole thing. Okay, good, you know? yeah. Good, really good. Let's do it, man. Cool. Here we go, ready, we're rolling. Sixteen bars. We, we use it from take one. Yeah. The, the whole take. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we have it. If if you'd like to come up, it sounded great. Absolutely great. All right. So uh, I what I'm going to do is take the first thirty-two bars of your original solo loop solo, and thirty-two bars in the last one you did. I think that's going to match up brilliantly. I hope so. That's eight bars. Keep that. Okay. I think yeah. we've got something good. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> listen. We'll have a listen. So you just play it from the top. Day, there's no other way to really put it. Every time you go in the studio, you got to be open to engineers and producers mixing and matching your music, cutting things up. Uh, and it, for me, that's like surgery, you know. Uh, but uh, to have Tony sort of come in and do what he does has me happy, you know. Uh, if he heard something great, then then there must be something great in there. We've come to the end of a busy day of recording. Zane surprised me today by doing something different. That's great. That's if he just listens to this tomorrow, I think he'll realize he did very, very well. How can it get better? <laughs> I don't. I think the bar is being set for how good things can get. Let's just hope I can do this again one day. You know, this is, this is what I live for.
That's great. That was great. Oh that was really great. I mean, that could be it. Good work. Thank you so much. I think it is good.